when you want total deliverance from calamities is self-examination write it down self-examination self-examination Luke chapter 15 from verse 17 to 20 popular story that I've shared here many times my Bible says when he the he being the prodigal son remember the story of the prodigal son that guy went and wasted his life in riotous livings the Bible said so from friends to all kinds of people he depleted himself until he was feeding with swine and then the Bible says through the power of self-examination when he came to himself men can come to themselves it is within the power of men to come to themselves you know what it means to come to yourself why is my life like this the day you are ready to sit down and ask honest questions no matter how ego stinging those questions are you are already on the path to deliverance are we together the prodigal son's father never came and met him in his mess there was a part that the gentleman had to do and play by himself many people do not come out of tragedy because they have not been able to sit down and ask honest questions why is this ministry like this why is this circle of disfavor what is wrong i look at my life and i do not see it consistent with what god has said what could be wrong let me tell you this it is more comfortable to blame people than to sit down and ask intelligence pro deliverance questions there are many of us today we are masters and experts at blaming people god government friends everybody the power if the prodigal son had said God punished those prostitutes that ate my money God punished the wicked friends that we parted away with God punished all those people he would have he would have become a pig himself but he said do you know what it's not the fault of the prostitutes I gave them room to destroy my money it's not the fault of the bad friends I did not have discernment to know they were evil friends but now no matter what you lose do not lose sincerity. Did you hear what I said? No matter what you lose, your point of deliverance is when you become sincere with yourself. Why do I have friends who always leave me? Why do I start a business and never end? Why is it that the vision God has given me does not grow? Is God speaking to someone? Why is it that I keep having attacks? Why is our family like this? 23 people, nobody's head has been lifted something must be wrong do you know you can sit down as an individual you can sit down as a couple you can sit down as a ministry you can sit down as a family it was god's servant who said years ago the church was not growing and they gathered the core leaders in the ministry rather than shouting and blaming people and giving flimsy excuses that there are too many churches or they are this and that and that no he went back and said there has to be a way out three days fasting and prayer and while they were praying according to him he said the Lord asked him to go out and he looked up and he saw a, a dark layer of cloud and the Lord told him this is the blindfolding layer that keeps misrepresenting your ministry before people and then he asked what should he do and the Lord told him to rebuke it he rebuked it it folded like a curtain and God gave him an instruction prepare a poster and write there come and see that was it hallelujah self-examination everybody hates me my uncle will not help me God will punish them their children will see evil you will suffer there while he keeps rising self-examination self-examination let me tell you this self-examination is very discomforting but that is the springboard for your deliverance God will never bring deliverance to a hardened, arrogant, self-righteousness um, self individual. No. For someone God is speaking to you now, your arrogance is the greatest demonic attack over your destiny, not even spirits. Let me show you the position of self-examination. This is it. The ability to go on your knees, no matter how great you are, get down on your knees Lord you gave me 10 million out of pride and foolishness I blew it away 
I repent. I need you to help me. I went around borrowing money. Now I'm in debt of 100 million, 1 billion. Oh, I gave the money to somebody. That, that's a flimsy excuse. Settle down with your destiny and take responsibility. I gave a real estate agent. He ran away with the money. What do you do now? Settle down. A miracle happens when people are ready to take responsibility. The word responsibility comes from the word responsive. How many hired servants? Give us the scripture, please. Look. How many hired servants has my father? And I am here. They have bread enough to spare and to perish. And I perish with hunger. Verse 18. I want to show you the power of self-examination. I will arise. I will arise. Not that I will lie down and wait for someone to come and meet me. I will arise. Men may forget me, but I will arise. I cannot redeem myself, but I can arise. And I will go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. Look at what he's saying. Self-examination is a miracle. The moment you get to a point where you can take responsibility for as long as you still blame people, I can tell you, redemption will be far from you. Even salvation today, those who receive that gift are those who admit that they do not have the power to help themselves. Anybody who comes before Jesus to be saved and you put your hand in your pocket and you come and stand and you are watching and smiling as if you are coming to, you are, I mean, as if you died for yourself and you say, Lord Jesus, well, interesting. I mean, I'm here. I mean, if, if you, are, you are speaking English. You will not be saved. With the heart, man believes. Are we together? Blind Bartimeo said, have mercy on me. He would have said, Jesus, I have wicked relatives. I'm not the only son of my father. I've been blind here and nobody has come to comfort me. It's the miracle of self-examination. For someone, God is speaking to you now. Why is my business down? There must be a way. I'm a CEO. Someone ran away with my money. Someone betrayed me. Someone stole my products and ran away with it. My business partners ran away. I know they may have the fault, but I need to take responsibility. Lord Jesus, it depends on only me and you. You remain ever faithful. The failure is from me. I take responsibility. How come I have four children and none of them respect me? Not they went to school and learned rubbish as if you taught them well. Take responsibility. Lord, even now it is not too late. They are adults and all of them discard me. There's something I've not done well. Why are my children not becoming great? All my children are beggars. Don't move around and saying, look at all your uncles. Some are in Lagos. Some are in House of Assembly. And they will not come. You hear parents with all due respect discuss those things. And their arrogant children also keep joining in the conversation to recycle pain. I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm trying to be truthful. Take responsibility. Hmm. Take responsibility. Take responsibility. Lord, help me. I need you. I need you. Help me. I cannot help myself. Oh God, you are my God. Help me. And I will ever praise you. That's a life of self-examination. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, say. Man of God, don't give excuses. You took the anointing for granted and you were careless. You took members for granted, you were careless. You insulted them and said all kinds of things. If you are tired of this church, go away. And they obeyed you and went away. Don't say there is a spirit. Before you talk of altars, go and kneel down before God and say, Lord, help my pride. 
Don't say it's my background, it's from my father. If I did not come from this father, I take responsibility. I've not been the best of shepherds. I've not loved the sheep. This is the attitude of genuine self-examination.